Galatians 2.21 is a passage that's used in neo Christendom to demonstrate to Christians that the Torah has been nullified by the blood of Christ, by the death and resurrection of Christ. And this is not what Paul is arguing. This is not what Paul is saying at all. Paul is arguing against the law of circumcision being applicable to Gentiles who are entering into the body of the Messiah has nothing to do with observing the Torah as a whole. It has to do with the, with the pharisaical tradition or custom of indoctrinating pagans, Gentiles, or the nations into the commonwealth of Israel through Brit Mulah, the covenant of circumcision. And in the body of the Messiah, all you have to do is be baptized and have faith, believe that he is the propitiator for our past sins and that he is the intercessor for our present and future sins. So Galatians 2.21 does not suggest or intimate in any way, shape or form that the Torah has been nullified. Now, let's prove this. Let's read it. Galatians 2.21, Paul says, I do not nullify the grace of Elohim for if righteousness were through the law, then the anointed died for no purpose. So we can understand where neo-Christians get the idea that Paul is saying that as long as you believe in Christ, your righteousness, your righteousness is, is through him, therefore you do not need the law. No, no, no. Once again, what we are arguing is that Paul is talking about the circumcision component within the law is not applicable for conversion, conversion for the Gentiles who enter in the faith. Let's prove it. Let's turn attention over to, um, let's go back to Galatians 2.21. I want to milk this. I do not nullify the grace of God. The grace of God is Yeshua the anointed. For if righteousness were through the law, then Christ died for no purpose. Let's look at Acts 15, 1 through 5. I'm going to lay down uh, the foundation to prove my position. Acts 15, 1 through 5. But some men came down from Judea and were teaching the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And after Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go to Jerusalem to the apostles and the elders about this question. So, being sent out or being sent on their way by the church, they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria, describing in detail the conversion of the Gentiles. These are not Hebrew Israelites. These are Gentiles who are converting to the faith by accepting the fact that Yeshua is the Son of God, not God, that He is the Son of God, that He is Messiah, and that He is the propitiator, that He is the atoning sacrifice for our past sins. Here we go. Verse 3 again. So, being sent on their way by the church, they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria, describing in detail the conversion of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the brothers. For when they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they declared all that God Elohim had done with them. Five, but some believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees rose up and said, it is necessary to circumcise them and to order them to keep the law of Moses. Pharisees believe that 
in order to be wholly righteous, fully righteous, you had to abide by every commandment in the Torah. No one has ever been able to abide by every single precept or tenet in the Torah. And because of that, we became a sinner. Perhaps not a practitioner of sin, but we would sin from time to time. The penalty of sin is death. And so what Paul argues is that we need a redeemer. We need someone to pull us from the pit of death. And what God gave to us in the Old Testament were animal sacrifices to redeem us from condemnation from the pit of death. In the New Testament, we have a new uh, sacrifice, a greater sacrifice in the body of Yeshua, the anointed. Not only does he propitiate or atone for your past sins, but he also brings you into the Jewish nation, the Israelite nation by adoption. And so there is a pharisaical tradition that is considered a yoke. And Peter is arguing that these pharisaical traditions, which we call Halakha laws, we couldn't even keep ourselves. So why are we trying to impose these traditions upon the Gentiles that God did not command, that Yeshua the Messiah did not command? Let's look at this. Acts 15, 6 through 11. The apostles and the elders were gathered together to consider this matter. Verse 7. And after there had been much debate, Peter stood up and said to them, Brothers, you know that in the early days, Elohim, God, made a choice among you that by my mouth a Gentile should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And Elohim, who knows the heart, bore witness to them by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us. And he made no distinction between us and them, having cleansed their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, pay attention, watch this now. Why are you putting God to the test by placing a yoke on the neck of the disciples that neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear. But we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Master Yeshua, the Anointed, as they will. Now, let's go back to the book of Galatians. Our highlight, our key verse in Galatians is going to 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 correspond with what we just read here in Acts. Pay attention. Here we go. Galatians 5, 1 through 6, verse 1. Key verse. For freedom, liberty, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Now he's going to tell us what this yoke is. Look, I, Paul, say to you that if you accept circumcision, if you accept circumcision, if you accept circumcision, the anointing would be of no advantage to you. Watch this. I testify again to every man who accepts circumcision that he is obligated to keep the whole law. We are obligated to keep the whole law. But the reality is that no one has been able to keep the whole law. And because of this, we have to accept the grace of Elohim to redeem us from the penalty of sin, which is death. So no man can say, well, if I receive brick malah, the circumcision or the, circum or the covenantal circumcision, that that will perfect me. Perfection comes by keeping the Torah in the faith of Yeshua the anointed. This is Paul's argument. Watch this. Verse 3, I testify again to every man who accepts circumcision that he is obligated to keep the whole law. You are severed from Christ, you who would be declared righteous, made righteous, that is, justified by the law. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit by faith we ourselves eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Yeshua, for in Yeshua the Messiah, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith working through love. Paul is not arguing against the Torah. This is a neo-Christian. This is a Protestant, a Catholic, an Eastern Orthodox, uh, an Evangelical 
premise and it's not substantiated biblically within the context that they are reciting this passage in. Okay, here we go. Notice Galatians chapter 6, verse 11 through 13. Paul says, See with what large letters I am writing to you with my own hand. It is those, it is those, it is those, it is those, verse 12, it is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh who will force you to be circumcised and only in order that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ, that is, for the death of Christ. For even those who are circumcised do not themselves keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. Galatians 2.21 is Paul's argument that no one is declared righteous by the law. The righteous reveals, excuse me, the law reveals sin. It also reveals what righteousness is. It also reveals how one can attain to this righteousness. The law reflects the righteousness of God. But the reality is that man has always fallen short. Remember, Paul said, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Solomon said that there is no man who has ever existed that has not sinned. David said, If you mark every man's sin, who will stand before you? So it's only by God's grace that we're able to stand before him as a sinner brothers and sisters I want you to consider the 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 Old Testament when we sin we brought an animal sacrifice certain sins but there was a morning sacrifice and an evening sacrifice covering the unintentional sins of the people we then have um, Yom Kippur we have a sacrifice that is brought by the Creator a bull for the priest, uh, a ram, lamb, goat for the people, right? And this sacrifice covered and atoned and purged all sins. So blood always had to be shed to cover our sin, to atone for our sin. When John saw the Messiah coming in the book of John, John said, Behold, the Lamb of God which takes away the sin. He did not say the Lamb of God which takes away the law. This is, and I say this respectfully, this is what neo-Christians, this is what nearly three billion people who profess to be disciples of Christ and followers of Christ and, and those who observe uh, apostolic orthodoxy, the follow of the apostles, this is what they are teaching. And it is biblically indefensible. Look at this passage. 1 Corinthians 7, 19. Paul says, For neither circumcision counts for anything, nor uncircumcision, but keeping the commandments of God. So now we have to ask ourselves, is Paul schizophrenic? Is he Does he have extreme bipolarism? I mean, if he's telling me in one place, I don't have to keep the law. And in another place, he's telling me, look, circumcision, these things are irrelevant. What is extremely important is keeping the commandments of God. Antalas, not antale, commandment, antale, antalas, commandments. And where do we find commandments? We find them in the first five books of the Bible, brothers and sisters. Last passage I'm going to recite to you as a paraphrase. Yeshua himself said, Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy them, but I have come to fulfill that which is written of me, right? In the law and the prophets. He says, Not one joke, not one tittle of the law shall in any wise pass until everything that is written of me, Yeshua the Messiah, has been accomplished. We're still waiting for his second coming, are we not? That has not happened and that's been prophesied. All right. 
So notice what Yeshua says. Therefore, whosoever shall break any one of these commandments, what commandments? Commandments that have been clearly explicated in the law and the prophets. Therefore, whoever shall break any of these least any of these commandments and teach others to do so shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. We're going to define what least is. And whosoever shall keep these commandments and teach people to do so shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now, let's see what least is. Unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees, you shall in no wise enter the kingdom. Call great in the kingdom of heaven are those brothers and sisters, right? who have been able to receive salvation because they not only kept God's law, but they taught people to keep God's law. The least in the kingdom of heaven are those who are outside of the kingdom of heaven during the kingdom period, right, being destroyed. These are the ones who have been condemned. Why? Because they are not only breaking the commandments of God, but they are finding passages in the New Testament, such as Galatians 2.21, to teach people to break God's commandments. There are a bunch of other verses in Galatians that you can submit for argumentation. I implore you to do so and submit them to me for argumentation. There are other verses in Romans and there are verses in Corinthians. Uh, there are verses in Colossians that you can submit to me to say, oh, yeah, what about this verse? What about this verse? What about this verse? What about this verse? All of the verses that you're going to submit to me are going to be verses where Paul is arguing against Brit Malah, the covenant of circumcision being used to indoctrinate Gentiles into the commonwealth of Israel through the body of Yeshua. I'm waiting for your phone call, waiting for your emails. Look here. Thank you for watching Q&A with Nasik. We'll see you next time. May the blessings of Yah be with you. Give me a call, 704-553-7625. Shalom.